My fellow three mothers up and thinkers this is LL3's newest podcast. My name is Craig, transmitting from the beautiful land of enchantment, which is also known as the state of New Mexico. And today's date, Tuesday, June 14th, 2016. Hopefully everyone had a great flag day in the United States of America. And happy birthday to a few people, including King Diamond, also known as Kim Peterson, who turned 60 years old. Congratulations there, my friend. And hopefully your holiday was a prosperous one. Uh, so we just um, hear more of the drama and what's happening with um, the Orlando shooting. And it's really interesting because there's even a claim that Omar Mateen was a steady patron at Club Pulse in Orlando. So how does him... Being a patron, allegedly being gay or homosexual, doesn't matter. And Islam go hand in hand. <laughs> so, in good faith, many people may have, may have their foot in their mouth. So, they don't know what to say. Okay, so that's why when I hear about him being a Muslim and, and a member of ISIS, I knew for a fact that was a major smoking gun. It was a bigger picture and an alleged false flag. And now everything's starting to come out little by little. Because I remember I did narrate one of the last articles by him, his ex-wife saying he wasn't religious. So, uh, very interesting, you know. And there's even a claim to two of um, some p- public reports that he sold his uh, house to his sister for $10 in April. So, that's an interesting claim. I'm not going to make any conclusions, but it's... Uh, Pretty more complex than what meets the eye, I would say. So I'm going to be doing a few topics pertaining to that and um, and keeping an eye out, too, what's going on in California and Yellowstone. You know, called Mike Snyder he did, from Men of America. He has some good stuff, so always always observe responsibly. Watch it, read his stuff. doesn't matter what your creed is. You know, he's a Christian, but his information is still very good. And I'm not here being anti-Christian or anything like that. So I'm just if I could give you guys notes. People get offended. Oh my goodness, he supports the Lord Jesus Christ. So everyone has an air sign. Run to the hills. Oh my goodness. But we have a lot in common. So um, that, I guess, was pretty cool. We do pay attention to what's going on in the world. And some things, he catches on some stuff and vice versa. That's why we like to share information with everyone as a unit, a team. That's how you um, make impact on the information war. So, so I'm going to be doing that. And it uh, looks like some news reporter talking about the AR-15, you know, and about gun control and all that, like embraces and about who should be having it. And it's, you know, I'm going to be reading that. I've seen the video, the video link on there. And um, they, in the course of what happened, Omar my, my teen had a permit, okay, Plus, he had a permit, and uh, he asked if he got it. But you know what? They're going to blame it on the Second Amendment of the NRA. Look, it's retarded. The same people that want to blame the Muslims for what happened in Orlando shooting. Okay? It's like left and right, dumb and dumber. Go. I just go right in the middle and crash right through the confounded walls. So I'm going to be starting off from Land Destroyer. 
got my eye on this one. And it says here, Orlando Tragedy, a note on opportunistic gun grabbers by Tony Carluzzi, which is good, good link. Go to Land Destroyer Report, you know, just type in that, landdestroyer.blogspot.com, or follow them on Twitter, because they're really, they're, is, the articles are really good, and um, gives you a bigger eye-opener than what the lamestream news wants you to know. So it says here, in the wake of the tragic shooting, may have reacted not with objectivity, logic, and courage, but with fear, hysteria, anger, and hatred. Some have, some have also reacted with shameful opportunism among many of these people, which includes racists, bigots, and warmongers, is also the gun control lobby. It should be pointed out that the Orlando shooting suspect was working as a professionally trained armed security guard at federal facilities for the private security sector contractor, the security contractor, G4S. Omar Mateen also applied to study at the Indian River State College Police Academy, according to Daily Mail article. How surely the undershooter was booted out of Police Academy last year. There's a link for that. So, some interesting stuff here, right? It was also investigated twice by the FBI. A ten, including a 10-month undercover investigation involving FBI informants, yet was still able to keep his job as an armed security guard because he has, has a federal contract. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, let me continue on here. This means that even a full ban on all guns of every kind for all private U.S. citizens would not have prevented this tragedy. The suspect was an armed security guard with access to firearms and had been thoroughly investigated, interviewed, and watched by multiple agencies and institutions throughout his career and would have still been able to perpetrate his act of armed mass murder. And should be, and it should be remembered that while the Orlando shooting is the largest mass shooting in American history at 50 dead, it is most certainly not the largest act of single day mass murder. The Negro's title for that goes to the attacks on September 11, 2001, which left nearly 3,000 dead. The weapon of choice, box cutters. But, you know, a lot of us can see things um, a little more complex than that, but that's what they address, okay? Violence is not a matter of access to weaponry. It is a matter of social, political, and economic stability, inequality, and an unraveling culture. America is based on social, economic disparity, political injustice, economic instability, and a culture of hatred, fear, and intentionally cultivated ignorance and division. That's the problem driving violence in America, and one must start there to reduce senseless violence driven by it. For those who are simply afraid every time they see a gun, have never touched one, and fear the thought of ever firing one. Stop letting irrational fear drive your politics. Politics is no better than any other fueled by hatred, fear, hatred, and ignorance. I like that. That is... He hit it out of the ballpark. Boom! To all those people that manifest, we gotta get rid of the AR-15! We gotta ban it! And you know what's so funny? It's, it, everyone, it's, they think the AR-15 is like some like some bazooka or 30-30 or 30-06, okay? Or some grenade launcher. It's like total drama. Because the people, I know women who shoot these things, all right? And there's low coil kick to it. It's very interesting on that. And um, people, if people never, people hear about the AR-15, see how dangerous and all that. Yeah, it, it depends on, the goes to the wrong hands of the, of the person. But like I said before, there's more people use firearms to defend themselves, property, and lives, into the, including loved ones. 2.5 million cases a year average. All right. And the AR-15, people use it for sport and all that good stuff, too. But the whole thing is, you cannot ban the firearms. If you study if you study death, um, gun control and genocide and democide, you understand. I recommend people to go to Death by Government. Type it in and look up for R.J. Rummel. He has a great book out. And um, there's plenty of other stuff out there. I recommend people go to jpfo.org. I might add that to – I might add those – I think I'm going to add those two to the, to the memo on this out of fairness. 
so that people could really take another grasp at it. And um, I know I did it in the past. I might just do it again. I'll just decide. But you know, guy, you folks are intelligent enough on what to do. But um, this is why I am very pro self defense, pro firearms, and I don't believe in compromising or anything like that or getting permits because I don't need permission where our rights are natural born. Guaranteed under the Ninth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, enumerated rights. Hey! So, you can repeal the Second Amendment, but I can still, still guaranteed under the Ninth, my natural born rights. I don't need permission. But if I'm going to use, use certain um, weaponry or tools, I want to take the initiative and educate myself and learn it. That's how you make yourself a more honorable individual that owns these particular tools for defense. You always have to have a higher standard. And of course, you're going to have crackpots out there. Hey, they make plastic, explos- plastic explosives, my friends. So think about that, okay? We really got to look at this a lot further, but Gun grabbers want to go crazy, they want to go manifest, they want to blame the NRA and gun owners for what happened with the mass shootings. You know what? They're just as pathetic as the ones that blame Muslims for the event, horrific events on 9-11, which they weren't devout Muslims. Do me a favor. Don't give me your garbage. All right? But the fact is this, like I said in my last, in my last couple of episodes, two episodes before, Stay vigilant and prep yourselves at the best of your ability. I'm not going to take that back. Okay, that's why this is what I'm about. I've been like this for a long time. And this is going to change my ways of thinking. I'll just you sit on the toilet and find out more fascinating than your, your dumbed down rhetoric. Okay, so, but I like what he wrote here on Tony Carlucci. Great guy, great stuff. And I recommend people follow him, follow my land, follow Land Destroyer on Twitter. Where they have his Facebook page too. Please do it, okay? And spread it out. Drive these social media networks crazy. All right, next one here came from the Conservative Treehouse dot com. And uh, it's interesting here because this is what witnesses report, witness reports. Omar Mateen was a frequent patron of Pulse nightclub and use gay data apps all right and so let's talk about here if they have links for his apartment that's an interesting developments if you look at Mateen's apartment is shared in daily daily mail it would appear that nothing was amiss no obvious signs of packing up no removal of personal items nothing which would suggest a long-term pre-planning exit for either Omar Mateen or nor his wife nor Zahi Salman and their three-year-old son. All right. Of course, they have links here. The apartment appears as someone was just to go to work. Now, witnesses, well, witness reports are surfacing that Omar Mateen was a regular visitor in the um, Pulse nightclub. There's a link for that. Orlando Sentinel. I'm going to read one from the LA Times, okay, just to see how much accuracy is that. You know, let's, let's try to hit both here, okay? Yeah, and let's, out of fairness. We'll hit both here, you know, and see what they have to say about that. So, um, but I will continue on. And uh, according to LA Times, Kevin West, a regular at Pulse Nightclub, said Omar Mateen massaged him on and off for a year before shooting the gay chat and dating app jacked. But they never met until early Sunday morning. West was dropping off a friend at the club. We noticed Mateen, whom he knew by sight, but by net, but not by name, crossed the street wearing a dark cap, carrying a black cell phone about 1 a.m. an hour before the shooting. He walked directly past me. I said, hey. He turned and said, hey. And nodded his head. Wes said, I could tell by the eyes. At least four regular customers of Pulse, the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender nightclub where the massacre took place, told Orlando Sentinel Monday that they believed they had seen a teen there before. Sometimes he will go over in the corner and sit and drink by himself. And other times he will get so drunk he was so loud and belligerent, said T. Ty Smith, who also used the name Aries. 
Okay, so when people say, oh, he's a Muslim, and according to this by T. Smith, Ty, uh, Ty Smith, he, so, he gets so drunk and he's loud and belligerent. How is that Islamic? People who are like Muslim bashing, going after the blame the Muslims for this event. Could you please show me in the Quran that being a drunk is approved by the Prophet Muhammad? And I'm not, you know, it's a, lot, it's a real controversial stuff, you know, on the Quran and so forth, how they treat the women, like people see things differently. But bring that up there, please, okay? He saw Mateen at the club at least a dozen times, he said. We didn't really talk to him a lot, but I remember him saying things about his dad at times. Smith said he told us he had a wife and child. As soon as West f f photos released a list of Mateen after the shooting, he said he drove to his local police station where officers summoned uh, FBI officials who showed him a photo of Mateen on a computer screen. I said that's him, West said, and turned over his phone and jacked login information to the FBI which still had the phone late Monday he said and there's more you can read that too which is um if I'm correct that's that's in the LA Times right yep that's the LA Times so I'm gonna read that too so, so it's a lot, a lot of interesting stuff is happening here you know and because everyone's there oh he's a Muslim he's a Muslim and sorry it was interesting here it says here BP Field okay whack and hunt contractor and his statewide farms license all right, and it says race is white, male, date date of birth November sixteenth, nineteen eighty six, so twenty nine years old. So um, yeah, so very interesting here. So kind of be drunk and belligerent, yeah. So how's that Islamic? Come on, all you Islamophobes out there, and like I said, the, like the people want to jump the gun completely. They're the same folks that believe the Muslims were responsible for September 11, 2001. Come on. Will you please get your head out of the sand? You're just like the, you have the same mindset as those idiots from Code Pink. Okay, if you get offended by that, who cares? You have the same attributes. Look at Look at look at the face value, but never examine the fine print. So I'm going to continue on here from the from the Orlando Sentinel, which I did promise. It says here Omar Mateen has been at Orlando Gay Club nightclub many times. At least four regular customers at the Orlando Gay nightclub were gunmen killed. Four nine people said Monday that they had seen Omar Mateen there before. Sometimes he would go over in the corner, sit and drink by himself, and other times he would get so drunk and a lot of belligerent. Ty Smith said. More details emerged on Monday about the 29-year-old gunman and, and what he did in the days leading to the, up to the massacre, the deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history. He was at Walt Disney World in April, said Disney manager, who requested anonymity. FBI Director James Comey said his agency was trying to nail down the report and the possibility that Mateen was scouting the amusement park as a potential target. The Associated Press reported. Smith told the Atlanta Sentinel that he saw Mateen inside at least a dozen times. We didn't really talk to him a lot, but I remember him saying things about his dad at times. Smith said he told us he had his wife and child. Okay, it's a little more clarification. When asked about those sightings, Atlanta Police Chief John Mina said he had no information. Another Pulse regular Kevin West told Los Angeles Times that Mateen massaged him and off for a year using a gay chat app. They never had they they had never met. Went West said, but he watched as Mateen entered the club about 1 a.m. Sunday, an hour before the shooting began. Mateen was a security guard born in New Hyde Park, New York, who walked into the nightclub about 2 a.m. Sunday with a semi automatic weapon, semi automatic pistol, and an assault rifle. AR 15, an assault rifle. Oh my goodness. These people smack them upside the heads, okay? While dance music blared, he opened fire, killing four or nine people. And injury 53. He died three hours later in the shootout with the Atlanta Police Department SWAT team when they stormed the building. During the standoff, Mateen proclaimed his allegiance to the Islamic State and his support for the Muslim brothers who set two bombs at the 2013 Boston Marathon Police said. So if you're drunk and belligerent and you, you call them the Muslim brothers, <laughs> pretty uh, unmeritable, I would say, right? Later Monday came word that Mateen's wife, Nora Zahi Salman, was not corroborating with authorities, according to law enforcement officials who spoke in a condition of anonymity. 
Investigators want to ask if she knew about his plans in advance or helped him scout out targets. The official said they have talked extensively with Mateen's ex-wife, Sarita Yusufi, who told reporters Sunday that the gunman was bipolar and sometimes violent. Mateen bought weapons he used, a 9mm automatic weapon and a 223 caliber assault rifle, which is an AR-15, folks, at St. Lucy Shooting Center a few days before the massacre. Owner Edward Henson on Monday said he vaguely remembered him. He He's nobody, said Henson. He's a customer. He came in, purchased guns, and left. Although the FBI investigated the team for possible connections to Muslim terrorists in 2013-2014, they closed they closed those cases, concluding he was not a threat, Comey said. Nothing in Mateen's background prohibited him from legally buying those, fire, those guns. And the head of the state agency that oversees gun permits in Florida told reporters Monday that the system worked the way it was designed. News Service of Florida reported. Mateen applied for a secu- state security guard license, the type that allowed the holder to carry a firearm, and he, and he got one. Adam said Adam Putnam, State Agriculture Met Commissioner, Mateen was a U.S. citizen, had no criminal record, and passed a psychological test. See, a lot of people you don't realize. You may be bipolar and all that, but you can still manipulate. Okay? So I'm just giving you a heads up here. He was eligible to buy as many guns as he liked because he was not a convicted felon and was not fa- facing a felony charge or a misdemeanor domestic violence charge. That's on... um. The law is HB 1355, Florida HB 1355. And shoot, you know what? I, I, I'm going to add that to the memo too, folks, so you can read it yourselves, all right? He was eligible to buy, okay, right down here. Sorry about that. He was not He was not a drug abuser, a fugitive, the subject of domestic violence injunction, someone who was in the country elite, or someone who was in the country illegally, someone who has been disowned, be discharged from the military, or someone who had been found by a judge to be mentally incompetent. That's that law. I'll put that up there. It has been signed by Rick Scott. And the whole thing is, who can determine? That's one thing I'm very skeptic on. All right. You cannot be deprived of rights because of accusations, said Eileen Rigg, a former gun shop owner in Orlando who now operates a security guard training company. She said she was troubled that the FBI had not earlier found enough evidence to make an arrest. More details emerged Monday, too, about Mateen's background, much of it related to law enforcement. He was When he was 19, Mateen was injured when the St. Lucie County Sheriff's deputy lost control of his cruiser while racing to the scene of an automobile crash, according to a report. Mateen was a passenger in the patrol car, taking part in a citizen ride-along, according to Sheriff's Office spokesman Brian Betty. In 2006, he worked at a state prison, Martin Correctional Institution in Indian Town. Uh, for six months, according to Florida Department of Corrections. That same year, he earned an associate's degree in criminal justice from Indian River Community College, according to school spokesman Robert Lane. That degree requires to become a law enforcement in Florida. Interesting here, huh? In 2007, he was hired by G4S private security firm based in Jupiter. His assignment at the time of his death, working as a security guard at a gated retirement community in South Florida, the company reported. Before that, G4S assigned him for a time to the St. Lu- St. Lucie County Courthouse in Fort Pierce, a gig that ended in 2013, according to court administrator Tom Genung. Cord Sadino and Chris Collin and, and, and our other Pulse customers who told the Sentinel they had seen Mateen in a nightclub. Collin said he had witnessed violent out had witnessed a violent outburst by Mateen. It was definitely him. He come he come in here for years, and people knew him. Sadino said, "Interesting." So he was because according to this report, he was a steady customer. So like I said, how is he how is he going to these gay clubs, getting drunk, being belligerent, and being Muslim? So then think about, hey, if it was a Christian, how is that? How is that? Chris, how is that? How is that? Um, coexist with his creed? Or Judaic, okay. So just to make you guys think about this very thoroughly, this is interesting there on the Orlando Sentinel. And let's check out what it says here in the L.A. Times. It may be repeated, but I'm just gonna look through here. Yeah, very similar. So um. 
very, very similar on here. But it says it's, it's some additional things. So I'm going to bypass some of the stuff because it sounds like it's before. But I will keep that link handy. Okay. And it says here in the next pair, it says it right down here. Uh, investigators are, are looking at reports that Mateen visited gay clubs and was using gay. Okay. Watch the space. Also, Monday officials said Mateen appeared to have been radicalized by Islamic extremists on the internet but expressed his sympathies with radical groups that violently oppose each other. On Sunday morning, Mateen told 9-1 dispatcher that he was attacking Pulse on behalf of the leader of the Islamic State. Same crap. Of course, the whole thing with the suicide. Yeah, it's the same stuff I said yesterday. So I'm going to leave that up there to get people to think, you know, and um, very interesting stuff, you know. Very interesting. So um, it's very similar. You can see the links yourselves, and um, it really boggles the mind. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to leave the, the Senate page up there, too, on here, so you can, folks can see it for yourselves. And um, that's going to be a link on there. But my friends, same crap, different package. But one thing I say, because I believe I still convinced it was a false flag, in good faith, one word order agenda. But the main t idea, he took advantage of a firearm free zone. So I don't, I don't have, and I, I could, I'm still gonna stick by that, because it is meritable. So. But I have added to purchase firearms by many little persons, and you can make, you can read it and all that, and the PDF format and the bill text, and you can make your own judgment. All right. So, next one here came from the end of American Dream dot com by Mike Snyder. Meanwhile, California fault lines and the areas area around Yellowstone are shaking like crazy. Over the past few days, the mainstream media has been fixated on the largest mass shooting in U.S. history. But meanwhile, there has been a highly Unusual seismic activity along major fault lines in California and near the Yellowstone supervolcano. Let's talk about Yellowstone first. In recent months, the big, the big geysers have been behaving very strangely. And there is something that my wife and I covered on our television show. And now, just over the past week, there have been three very significant earthquakes in the region. On June 9th, there was a 3.7 earthquake. On June 13th. There was a 4.3 earthquake, and earlier today, there was a magnitude of 4.0. Yes, the area around Yellowstone is hit by earthquakes all the time, but most of them are extremely small. For earthquakes of this size to be striking right around Yellowstone is highly unusual and more than just a little bit alarming. The map below comes directly from the USGS, and it shows all of the earthquakes of magnitude of 2.5 or greater have been hit wet west portion of the United States over the last week. The three big earthquakes that struck southwestern Montana are visible on the map, although they are hard to see because the dots overlap. But the main reason I'm showing you this map is because I want you to see all of the earthquakes that have been happening along the major fault lines of Southern California in recent days. The biggest was a magnitude of 5.2 that hit an area northeast of San Diego on Friday. Following the comes, following comes from NBC Los Angeles, a magnitude 5.2 earthquake centered in the desert northeast of San Diego caused shaking early Friday morning across Southern California. The earthquake occurred at about 1 a.m. northwest of Borrego Springs in San Diego County. According to the USGS, the earthquake was initially reported with a magnitude of 5.1 before it was revised to 5.2, according to the USGS. But the earthquake was not the end of it by any means. It is being reported that the quake was followed by at least 800 aftershocks. Yes, normally we expect there to be aftershocks after a large quake, but to have that many is very, very unusual. The earthquake, the quakes have been striking farther north of the coast of Northern California and Oregon are also great concern as concern as well. Just recently, I wrote about the fact that the federal government has con been conducting drills 
that have that I have attempted to simulate the response to a magnitude 9.0 Casadilla subduction zone earthquake. In such, if such an earthquake were to strike at this moment, the damage caused would be incalculable. And the USGS has confirmed that such an earthquake is very possible and that it will likely trigger huge tsunami waves. The USGS has warmly confirmed that some the same computer models show it is capable of producing an earthquake with a magnitude up to 9.3, which would likely trigger huge tsunami waves. This would be more powerful than a magnitude 9 tsunami causing quake that hit Japan in 2011, claiming 2,000 of lives and taking out nuclear reactors. Worse still, many scientists say the U.S. is not yet prepared to deal with such a natural disaster and it could strike at and at a time or any time. Unless it's, 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 it's at a time. I think it's any time. But the scientist tells us we are actually way overdue for such a quake and accompanying tsunami when it comes large numbers of Americans that are clustered right along the coastline will die. Why all of this of great greater concern now is due to the fact that many areas along the ring of fire that roughly encircle the Pacific Ocean are roaring to life right now. For example, just today, the biggest earthquake in Eurasia sent hot ash more than three miles into the air. Eurasia is largest volcano, which is a uh, soap, um, soap Sapka in Russia's Far East erupted, shooting hot ashes into the air on Tuesday, local geophysical service said. The eruption was detected Tuesday morning. The eruption column rose 6 kilometers or 3.7 miles. The steam gas plume, plume, plume stretched for 47 kilometers to the west of the volcano. A representative of the Russian agency told I, 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 RIA Novosossi. And down in New Zealand, there is evidence that a brand new major volcano may be in the process of forming under a small town. Interesting there, my friends. Huh? Beneath Matata, a small coastal town 125 miles from Auckland on New Zealand's North Island, scientists recently discovered a massive magma buildup, possibly signaling the beginning of a new, of a new volcano. But oddly, this magma chamber Magma chamber is nowhere active, nowhere near an active volcano. According to geophysicist Ian Hamling, since 1950, an incredible influx of magma, enough to fill 80,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools, has accumulated beneath the small New Zealand town, pushing up the surface of the ground by 40 centimeters or 16 inches. In my, in my book entitled The Rapture Verdict, I talk about Jesus prophesied that he would see a great increase of seismic, seismic activity in the last days, and that's precisely what's taking place. What she means about earthquakes from one place to another. The crust of our planet is becoming increasingly unstable, and we have been seeing a series of very disturbing earthquakes and volcanic eruptions so far in 2016. Here in the United States, in the recent weeks, we have seen very large earthquake swarm developed under Mount Hood, Mount Rainer, Mount St. Helens simultaneously. Perhaps you don't think that this is significant, but many of the experts sure do. At some point, there will be major volcanic eruptions along the West Coast. At some point, there will be major earthquakes along the West Coast. Scientists tell us it's just a matter of time before we see these things. Unfortunately for all of us, these things may start happening with a frequency and an intensity that none of us are expecting. He's absolutely correct. Things are going to happen. And a friend of mine and myself, we've been keeping tabs on Yellowstone because that's very essential. If that goes, a lot of places around the country can be wiped off the map, including Utah and all that. But like I said, hopefully that's not the case, Lord willing. But um, something like something got to look really pay attention to, my friends. That's why you cannot be distracted in one area. You have to always try to vary and just a lot of things are happening. And if you go for the hype and hoopla and don't know the real deal, like Mother Nature, then you'd be you'd be screwed. So please, my friends, I urge everyone out there to pay attention, geopolitically too, but Mother Nature as well, because it is just it's vital. So um, 
This is really going to be interesting times, my friend. You know? Transformation year, according to Chinese scientists, 2016, the year of the monkey. Would you like to fire monkey right now, right? Yeah. All right, next one here. You can't make this up. Kerry and Saudi Prince pledged to fight extremism after shooting. This is from the Ron Paul Institute.org. Written by Daniel McAdams. You can't make this up. Okay, well, yep, okay. Here's a further point proof that U.S. foreign policy fact is stranger than fiction. One day after the Orlando shooting, where some 50 patients of a homosexual bar were gunned down, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry sat down to dinner with Saudi Prince Mohammed bin Salman, Salman in Washington, D.C., according to the State Department, discussed this weekend shooting in Orlando and expressed the shared commitment to continue the cooperation combating combating the, vi- the spread of violent extremism both regionally and internationally. What the hell are you guys, what the hell are they talking about? I know the writer's talking about this, but I'm like, what? Saudi Arabia right now, my friends, they treat their people like pieces of garbage. Violent extremists, you gotta fight violent extremists, but it's okay when you, when you treat people like dog meat and chop their heads off, right? Please. And they said, no, no, there are not hundreds of mass shootings each year. On the hills of the mass shootings in Orlando, Florida, early Sunday morning, the media reports are coming out again for the being hundreds of mass shootings here in America. For example, we have Fox headlines. Ooh, hold on here. Let me just do something for a moment, my friends. I'm going to, because I want to really want to read this one more, yeah? Yeah, there you go. Okay, one moment here. Sorry about that. I'm gonna read on here. It's too many. I guess it's what happened was too many things at one time. That's okay. Shoot. All right. This um. See, I'm gonna check something out. Yeah, why not? One moment here. I'm going to try, try something here for a moment. Be back in a flash. Okay. I'll proceed here. All right. I'll start from the top again. Here's proof that the U.S. that the, that, uh, U.S. foreign policy fact is stranger than fiction. One day after the Orlando shooting where some 50 pages of a homosexual bar were gunned down. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry sat down to dinner with, with Saudi Prince Mohammed bin Salman in Washington, D.C., according to the State Department. There's a website for that, a link for that, so if you want to check it out. Discussed this weekend shooting. And Orlando expressed their shared commitment to continue their cooperation in combating the spread of violent extremism isn't both regionally and internationally. Good grief, like a bunch of hypocrites, you know? <laughs> Check this out. Yes, you know, the same country that follows a matter of official policy, the exact treatment of homosexuals as we met it down out by the Atlanta shooter has expressed concern over extremism. Saudi Arabia's own violent extremism doesn't end in its treatments of homosexuals. As the defense prime minister of the Saudi kingdom, Saudi Prince Mohammed bin Salman is responsible for the brutal and brutal and genocidal war on Yemen and for Saudi Arabia's strong backing of racial jihadists. There's links on here too, so you can, you can really take the digital and check it out. All right. Including Al Qaeda for the fa- for the past five years have killed tens of thousands in the attempt to overthrow a secular Syrian president Assad. Also, if reports about the contents of still classified 28 pages of the 9-11 report are accurate, the Saudi government played in the role in the account of attacks of the United States. On the United States. 
Imagine sitting down to dinner with Muhammad Salman and listening with a straight face as he bleeds down about human rights and needs to combat violent extremism. There is enough non-alcoholic beverages on earth to make the meal like that, like that go down. <laughs> I have to agree. That is so comical. <laughs> I'm sorry, my friends. This is totally insulting, you know, but um, it's nothing new at all. I, that's why you got to laugh. You got to laugh at these idiots. You know, because I agree completely. Like some, like some of these bobblehead politicians, like Marco Rubio, Glambor Rubio. Oh yeah, well I'm against the uh, embargo of Cuba because they violate human rights. But he'll bow down to the people from Saudi Arabia, right? Come on, give me a break. This is so pathetic how some of these clowns are, and they're walking around with no clothes. This is why, when it comes to politics, I just laugh. Okay, and I've been a Ron Paul supporter, so I have no shame on saying it. I'm a freedom loving and sovereign thinker. I'm not a parrot on Congressman Paul. I respect his principles, and that's why that's why I supported him in the last two last three campaigns. But this is one thing for sure. Ron Paul is probably laughing at this as well, and I don't blame. I don't. I wouldn't blame him one bit. Let's see how pathetic and dumbed down you folks really are. So. Um, is why I just get a big kick out of this hypocrisy. It's like it's like you know some of these uh, celebrities. Oh yeah, we gotta have tougher gun laws. Yeah, but they have armed bodyguards. Okay, get come on. It's, it's like it's totally comical, man. Bizarro world, I would say. You know, so um, I'm gonna take do something here for a moment. Be back. All right, never mind with that. So um, that's all I gotta say. You just gotta laugh about it. I do it all the time. All right, finally. There's a video on here about this by Gersh Kuntzman from the New York Daily News. Say, firing an AR-15 is horrifying, menacing, and very, very loud. It feels like a bazooka. It sounds like a cannon. You need palm of hands there, Mr. Kuntzman? Come on. One day after four nine people were killed in Orlando shooting, I traveled to Philadelphia to better understand the firepower of military-style assault weapons and hopefully explain their appeal to gun lovers. But mostly, I was just terrified. Oh, I'm going to continue on here. Many gun shops turned down our request to fire and discuss the AR-15, a, a style semi-automatic rifle popular with mass killers such as San Benito terrorist Saeed Farouk and similar to the SIG Saucer M6, MC6 rifle used by Orlando terrorist Omar Mateen. But Frank Stelchman of Double Tap Shooting Range and Gun Shop invited me, videographer Michael Sheridan, and reporter Adam Shire to come down. Stel- Stelmac is not like many gun lovers. He admires his weaponry, yes, and has difficulty explaining why law-abiding citizens need a gun that can empty a 40-round clip in less than five seconds. But he also hates the idea that bad people get a hold on guns like this and use it to kill without difficulty. Well, I'll, I'll say this, um, Cuntsman. If all hell breaks loose, you want it, you want a little you want a little bottle cap, a water pistol, or you want a 40, 40 round clip that would t- that will take the aggressors out less than five seconds, okay? Man, like a like hi there. I don't know about this, but my hand, I, I know I I have my hands on like palmolive. I call you like a palmolivist here, okay? But I will continue on. There should be expanded background checks extending to your family, friends, associates. He said, and there should be mental health screening. In Europe, if you want to buy a gun, you have to see a doctor for a site check examination to see if something's not right. Stomach opened his shop for six years ago after career law enforcement in Europe even called for government officials to take away guns from some owners, something very few gun advocates support. You know, so it's funny with that particular language about background checks, the mental health screen and all that, you know. Look what happened. Look what happened to Mateen. All right. Okay, I'll proceed. Stop me. Oh, yep, okay. He says here, he also said he'd never sell guns to someone who looks a bit funny, and he claimed that he prevented many guns from getting into the wrong hands because it would be pushed to ask stupid questions like, what happens to me if this gun is stolen? Well, I'll say this in Stomach. You know what? He has the right to refuse. Hey. Hey, there you go. You don't need the government. You can, people got to be sharp. Um, 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 uh, you can be sharp. You have the right to refuse. Plain and simple. But very few gun shop owners do anything close to style mix stiff, stiff 
sniff test. He acknowledged how easy it's to find another gun shop owner willing to make the sale. Well, some do, some don't, right? Very easy, in fact, as Philadelphia Daily News columnist Helen Ubina showed today, you can get a military weapon in seven minutes in this country. Oh, really? Depends where you go. Richard Cohen, American, uh, no, never mind. That's the, that's the wrong here. Selmec doesn't think it should be easy, but he thinks it should be allowed. I would say that's the clerk's, the dealer's discretion. He loves the AR-15 for cops, soldiers, hunters, and target shooters. Is 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 shoot the? It's fun to shoot something like that. He said, "Not in my hands. I've shot pistols before, but never something like an AR-15. Squeeze lightly on the trigger, and the resulting explosion of firepower is humbling and deafening, even with ear protection." The car bruised my shoulder. The brass shells casing disorientated me as they flew past my face. The smell of sulfur and destruction made me sick. The explosions, loud like a bomb, gave me a temporary case of PTSD. For at least an hour after firing the gun, just a few times, I was anxious and irritable. Man, even in, in, even in a semi-automatic mode, it's very simple to squeeze off two dozen rounds before you even know what has happened. In fully automatic mode, it doesn't take an imagination to see dozens of bodies falling in the front of your barrel. All it takes the will to do it. 49 people can be gone in 60 seconds. <laughs> I'm sorry. Great. Mr. Kuntzman. Or Kuntzman. I don't, don't matter. Kuntzman. There's women I know who are shorter, attractive, that owns this particular weapon. They don't go, and they can shoot it pretty damn good. They didn't get any bruises. They may get the sulfur, the bullets hit them. No, that's nothing new, okay? It, hap- it happens. But you just, like, like you probably, it's like, it's like you never really shot anything like this in your entire life. It's a real shame. Because everyone should take the initiative on learning how to shoot this and see and see if it's good for them or not. But you're like a drama queen. Give me a break. Try a thir- uh, a, a Winchester 30-30 or a .30 6 Those are high-power rifles, my friend. I can't call you a friend. He's a clown. I'm sorry. Try that. Okay? And you, yeah, you may get bruised. You may get an idiot cut happens okay but you know what this is pure a drama queen attributes and you know what i feel sorry for individuals like yourselves go get yourself some bar get get yourself a bowl of pomal soap okay get a bottle of pomal soap put it in there put it in the bowl with water and put your hands into it and tell people what kind of expert you are please it's awful stupid lousy all right take a dump and smell the aroma of, of uh, my deprecation, then hear, read this rhetoric of yours. I don't know. But um, I recommend you practice a little bit more. If not, get out of Dodge. You're contaminating space. And by the way, this article is pretty damn pathetic overall. However, Stelchman, yeah, he has that entitlement to right to refuse which is can't i'm not gonna crucify him all right it's like everything else plain and simple so you know what so you're you're the fool this is comical one-on-one and shows you hi i'm a man i use palm olive hands i use palm olive soap enough said I'd like to thank everyone for listening to this show. Plus, feel free to download and share this information throughout your social media network. If you have any comments or recommendations that you're going to send me, please always use your correspondence with the quorum. You can hit me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Tumblr, Freedoms Network, YouTube, and iHeartRadio. Oh, I always say iHeartRadio twice. Scene.life. <laughs> See, I fumble once in a while myself, okay? Or you can email me 
at Loki Luck 3 altogether at gmail.com. All right, my friends. I'd like to thank everyone for listening. Plus, always remember that demoniac resistance is healthy for the soul and can liberate humanity. Until next time, take care of yourselves, keep on spreading the love, and may your guardian spirits be with you.